Okay, so now we need to talk about uh, the last element of formal logic, uh, and it is the trickiest element. Um, it's very important, though, and it's also what I believe to be unique uh, to this DVD, and it's a very powerful tool uh, for dealing with some of these games, but it's tricky. Uh, so it's okay. You know, if you need to rewind, go ahead and do that. So the best way to explain these two special if-then rules is to put them into the context of a particular type of game that you're likely to see, and we're gonna call that a yes-no game. And what we mean by yes-no is when entities are to be placed in one of two places. For example, in the forest or outside the forest, on sale or not on sale, in Berkeley or in Oakland, in two places, but to kind of reduce it to its most basics, we're gonna call this yes, no. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just create yes, no. And again, the yes could be inside the forest and the no outside the forest, or the yes could be on sale, the no could be not on sale, or on or off, or what have you. So the first special if then rule is if f, then no G. Well, what do we mean by that? So again, that's if F, that is if F is in yes, then G is in no. If F, then no G. Well, I'm gonna demonstrate to you that there are only three possible options for taking down this rule, for applying this rule. So number one, I could put the F into yes and the G into no. Right? I mean, that's the application of that rule specifically. Contrapositive, don't forget your contrapositive. That means if G, then no F. So if G, then no F. G goes into the yes, F goes into the no. So that's one option, two options. Now the third, this gets a little bit tricky. What if I were to put F into the no? That is no F. Well, if we look back to our rule, we don't know anything about if, no, f. We just know if, f. So I don't know what would happen if I have if, no, f. On the other hand, we could also, why don't we put g into the no? That's no g. What if, no g? I don't know what happens if I have no g. So it turns out that in this particular rule, I could actually have F and G going to the no column together. That's a little bit tricky. So notice we have these three options here. We could have F and yes and G and no. We could have G and yes and F and no. Or we could have F and G both going into the no. Now right now, you might need to actually rewind <laughs> to see what we just did, because that's tricky. There's no doubt about that. But again, this is a very powerful thing that can help us a lot in these games. But moving right along. Put another way. If F then no G, what does that really mean? That means F and G cannot possibly go in the yes column together. I know. No F G. Like, there's no way you could have F and G going to the yes column. Well, that means that at least one needs to go into the no. Well, back to our setup. Back to the setup. Notice, under all circumstances, in the first circumstance, I have G in the no column. In the second circumstance, I have F in the no column. In the third circumstance, I have F and G in the no column. Under all circumstances, I must have G or F or both going into the no column. That's what makes this rule special. If I say if F then no G, what that's really telling me is that at least one of those need to go into the no column under all conditions, no matter what. And you're gonna see that is gonna be very, very helpful to us. The way we're going to deal with that is if it says if F then no G. Again, let's go to kind of a separate yes, no column uh, sketch. The way we're gonna set that up, if I have if F then no G, as soon as I see that rule, given a yes, no game, I can build that rule directly into the no column. I can write 
F slash G. The slash will be an or, F or G, or both. Under all circumstances, I know that's what's going to happen. I have to have F or G or both going to the no column. Okay, well, if you get that, that's great. Uh, let's talk about the second special if then rule that personally I find even stranger. If no K, then L. Well, again, back to our yes, no. Similar to that first rule, there are three uh, options for this. Number one, well, what if no K? K goes in the no, then L goes into the yes. Contrapositive. What if no L? Then I have to have K into the yes. But then once again, what if I put K into the yes? I don't have if K. I have if no K. I don't have if K. Well, what if I put L into the yes column? Well, once again, I don't have if L. I have if no L, but I don't have if L. So in fact, given this rule, it is entirely possible for both K and L to go into the yes column. Put yet another way, notice our options. In our option one, we have L in the yes. In option two, we have K in the yes. In option three, we have K and L into the yes. So what this rule is telling us is since K and L cannot go into the no column, right? No K, L. There's no way you can have K and L into the no column. Because again, if no K, then yes, L. And if no L, then yes, K. Since K and L cannot go into the no column together, at least one, if not both, must go into the yes column. So once again, given this special if-then rule, if you're given no K, then L, you can build that in <clears throat> into the yes column as K slash L or both. Again, the slash is or, K or L or both. You know, I, we write in or both uh, to remind us because usually a slash will mean either or. So that's why we write in the or both to remind us, okay, wait, it could be K or L or both. But we know under all circumstances it must be K or L or both. Okay, well, why don't we take a look at, again, this training manual, please, and that's going to be Roman numeral five, where it says the two special if-then rules. Go ahead and read over uh, number one and number two, please. Take a minute to do that. Okay, one little last thing, uh, and then we will move on to an application of these special if-then rules. Notice where it says number three, uh, if x, then no y, and no z. So this is our last thing. This is yet another application of the two special if-then rules. But if I were right, if x, then no y, and no z, this rule, if we want to, can be divided into two parts. That means we have if x, then no y. That's our special if-then rule. And we also have if x, then no z. That's what that rule is saying. So when you see a rule like that, that actually tells you actually have two special if-then rules in one. Of course, the other way to look at that is if they have something like, if no x or no y, then z. That can be rephrased into two special if-then rules. Again, that means if no x, then z. It also means if no y, then z. And those are also, again, two special if-then rules. So just, just so you know, it's, this is not that big of a deal. The two special if-then rules are really a big deal. Uh, these last two examples are not such a big deal. They really don't show up that much. But just to be very thorough about this, I do think uh, you should take note of that. That's all. OK, well, that's formal logic. That being said, why don't we see an application of formal logic on one of these games, and what we're gonna do is take one more game out of order, then we will go to the beginning of our book. So the next game we're going to do is going to be uh, test number 33, game number two.